Howdy folks, my name is Ant, and if you're new to the channel, I'm building an E46 um, drift car, and I just bought a TIG torch for my MIG welder, and I'm gonna teach myself how to TIG weld. Never done it before, I've MIG welded for years. Um, so yeah, I've bought a torch for my MIG welder, and uh, I'm gonna teach myself how to TIG weld, which will be interesting. Alrighty, so I've done all the necessary things. I've ground down any scaly stuff off that bit of metal. I've acetone washed it. So let's see how it goes. Alrighty, so I've got the machine set to about 80 amps. I'm just gonna try and uh, run the, the torch along by itself without any filler rod first, just to try and get a feel for the arc and everything and see, uh, see how we go. Well, that just completely burnt my tungsten away. Interesting. <laughs> so, I actually forgot to turn my gas on. So, I don't know if that had anything to do with what just went down then. Um, how it completely burnt my tungsten away. But, um, yeah, I'm going to try it with the gas on now and see what happens. But I didn't think that would just melt my tungsten away without having gas on. But we'll see. Alright, gas on. <laughs> Well there, well, there you go. That didn't burn my tungsten away. Shit, yeah. So that's really good. Um, I didn't melt my tungsten away that time because I had the gas on. So, yeah, crazy. I thought maybe I had the torch and the, um, the earth clamp around the wrong, wrong way, but definitely around the right way because when I put the gas on, it didn't burn my tungsten down to Oblivion, like like it was burning a, a stick welding electrode. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna do a couple more passes, just like this, and then I'm gonna try and put some filler rod into it on a couple other passes, so let's see how that goes. Don't forget the gas. So that time I just tried uh, like bringing my torch up and down and changing the distance of the tungsten to the metal and just seeing how different the, how different the uh, kind of the arc is um, so I can get a hang of how far I need to be away from the piece of metal. So yeah, um, I'm going to do one more run, I'm going to turn the amps up a little bit, do one more run without filler, then I'm going to try with filler. As you probably could have seen, the torch got stuck um, a, a little bit after I started. Um, I think I just got a little bit too close to the material and the tungsten stuck to the, uh, to the piece of material. So I had to just pull it away a little bit. Um, let's have a look at these welds. 
So my first couple of uh, welds without any filler, just straight torch. Fuck, it looks cool as. I like that. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna do some passes and use a bit of filler rod and see um, how that all works out. Mmm, that was a little bit harder. My tungsten got stuck and then I had to wiggle it around and uh, I've actually um, burnt off a bit of the tungsten there so I'm gonna have to resharpen it. Alrighty, so I've actually turned the vise around so that I've got something to rest on. Um, maybe that's gonna help me out a bit. That was a little bit better. Let's do another one. Alrighty, so what I was finding with that was that as I was trying to dip the filler in, I was dipping the torch in as well. So the tungsten and the filler would touch the material together and then the tungsten would get stuck onto the material. So I've just got to practice getting that coordination right, keeping the tungsten at the same height but just dipping the filler in. So obviously it's going to take a bit of practice like everything, but um, not, too, not too shabby. I'll give you a look at those now. So here's the welds with the filler. I mean, nothing spectacular, but not too bad for someone that's never done it before. Here's the welds with just the torch. As you can see, they've uh, bitten into the metal, a bit of penetration. And these ones are a little bit risen from the filler. Nothing great, but not too bad. Now I'm gonna try and stick a couple of bits of metal um, together, weld them together. So maybe that might be a very different story. Let's see how that goes. I did one more for good measure and it actually was a lot better than the others. A lot more smooth sailing, free flowing, all that beautiful stuff. So yeah. Alrighty, so got a couple of bits of flat here, set up at a 90 degree angle. Gonna uh, test this out, see how I go welding these together. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna try and tack them together just with the torch for now, and then, uh, then start adding some, adding some fill up rod into it after I've tacked it.
Alrighty, so I've tacked here, tacked here. Let's see how it goes when I take off the, what's a majiggy? Nice. So I'm going to flip it over, do a couple of tacks um, on the other side. Alrighty, now that I've tacked here and I've tacked here, I'm going to uh, try and put some filler wire in there. There's that first pass I just did. Not too bad. Um, definitely need to be resting my arms on something to make it a little bit steadier. But that uh, isn't too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to do the next pass. Um, I've just turned the amps down to 80 just to see if I can control it a little bit better. And we'll see how that goes. Definitely felt a lot more controlled on that one. Definitely felt a lot more controlled on that one, but it didn't quite turn out as good, as good looking as the first bit. It's a little bit manky on that, so maybe I'll just go up to 90, halfway between, and uh, test that out. So that last bit actually turned out much better. Um, it was a bit hotter, but I just moved quicker and it didn't turn out as manky. So it's hard to tell because it's only like, I don't know, maybe less than an inch, maybe 15 mil um, at the end there. So it's pretty hard to tell, but yeah, it looks better than, um, than the rest of the stuff. It's not gonna focus. There we go. So yeah, I'm gonna flip it over and try to do the other side. Alrighty, let's try this side.
that's definitely a lot harder to do. Holy shit. Dooly dooly! Let that cool down. Alrighty, so this way is a lot harder. I think it might be because of the thicker material, the way that it's, uh, it's joined together there. Um, you're trying to burn more material than you are actually um, in the way that I did it the first time. So, it got better towards the end, which is cool. So, yeah, I, I realized that if I go slower um, and then just keep feeding more filler wire into it, like consistently, instead of just dabbing it, then it actually turns out a lot better. As you can see at the start here, I didn't have much filler there and it was just burning into the material. So yeah, fun and games. Thought I would uh, stick that other bit that I first started off with to this bit as well. And I didn't even use any filler wire on that. I just used the torch, just swirled it around like that and melted the two uh, metals together or the two pieces together. And that has come out all right. I even, uh, I've even kept this, I've even written on this, sorry, 9th of the 5th, 2020 for a bit of uh, memorabilia of my first ever TIG welds. So I got it flipped over and gonna do um, a weld on this side here. I actually wanted to upgrade my tungsten to the um, 2.4 because it's got the 1.8 in it at the moment. And apparently for five mil steel, you should use a 2.4. So I wanted to change that out, but I can't because um, the bit in the torch where this slides into um, is only designed for 1.8 mil tungsten so i'm gonna to have to get another one of those so i'm not going to actually use this for this bit i'm just going to keep the 1.8 in there for now Alrighty, so that was a fair bit of a mess um i don't know it was coughing coughing and splattering a lot um one thing i didn't do was i didn't clean um this bit of metal before i joined it to this one so that might have something to do it i didn't use any acetone i didn't grind any of it down um, so yeah, but there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. So even, um, even though I've just done a little bit of TIG welding, you know, in the last half an hour or whatever I've been going, um, I've noticed a couple of things. Um, and one of the things is you, you really have to have the right tungsten for the, um, size of the metal. Cause if the metal's too thick and the tungsten's small, um, it's not going to work. It's just gonna, it's not gonna pull properly. It's not gonna push the weld. It's not gonna um, penetrate the, the steel and all that kind of thing. Um, another thing that I've noticed is that torch needs to be basically pointing, you know, straight up and down from the, um, the material. You, I think you can have it on a little bit of an angle, but on too much of an angle, um, it just doesn't pull. I noticed myself going on a bit of an angle like I would if I was MIG welding and pushing pushing along like that but you've really got to be straight up and down nice and vertical for that um, for that electrode to actually be or that tungsten to actually be um, burning into the steel and for that um, I guess the arc whatever you want to call it the arc to be um, working efficiently so the other thing is that filler wire that I'm using is um, 1.8 and they say to be, if you want to be welding 5 mil steel, you should be using a uh, like a 4.2 or 4.6 filler wire. Um, so maybe the filler wire is too small for the application, um, but yeah, 
just a couple of things that I'm picking up on already and um, I think that I'm going to pick it up pretty quickly just because I have um, I have bronze welded with a oxyacetylene before so I do get the pooling um, kind of theory behind everything um, so yeah but definitely when I when I welded that other side when I didn't put any filler wire in and I just join the two metals together and I was just using like a um, like a swirling motion like that and you know pushing the two metals into each other that worked really well and has actually come up all right so um, now I'm going to try a bit of exhaust pipe that's mild steel exhaust pipe and it is uh, 1.8 mil thick so the tungsten's right for the size of the um, tube and also the filler wire is the right size for the tube so we shouldn't have any dramas there so let's get into that alrighty so got a couple of uh, three inch bits of mild uh, steel exhaust pipe cut up and ground up so gonna join them together sit them in the in the vise and uh, try and weld them up see how we go Alrighty, got these set up in the vise. I'm going to tack them together and then uh, then start trying to weld them and put some filler rod into them. But it's too hot, but it just burnt a hole. Struggling with this. Alrighty, so I've just reground my tungsten. Um, I've turned the amps down. It was at 90 from the pieces that I was welding before and uh, I've, I've gone down to 70 just to see if that um, helps me not blow a hole in this. That was easier. It was still a little hot, so uh, I decided to go down to 60. So I'm going to do another tack, see how that goes. Still blow a hole, but um, there was a bit of a gap in between the two two pieces, so I think that's where the filler wire comes in, eh? All right, let's get a bit of filler wire action this time. Alright, better. Still not great. 
Alrighty, so this is where uh, I've tried to do a few tacks um, and it's just sort of blown up a little bit. See here, this bit here was um, was a good tack. This one here was a good tack. And this is where I've used the filler wire. So not your typical, you know, awesome looking, uh, whatchamacallit, TIG welding, but um, it looks all right. All right, I'm gonna try and do a little bit more. So that one, not too sexy at all. I don't know. It's just blowing shit around, <laughs> trying to figure it out. But yeah. Alrighty, so I just finished welding it all up and I actually dropped the amps down, right down to 40 now because I just felt like it was just way too hot. Because as you can see here, it's quite melted through um, how it's melted right through the pipe and protruded through the other side but this is the sort of last section that I just did as you can see here it's a little bit more the welds a little bit more pronounced even along um, here so that means it's not blowing through and pushing it through and if you have a look in here um, if it's gonna focus it hasn't push the weld all the way through where it has done um, like down here and along here so this pipe is actually got a coating of um, I think it what they call it as aluminized coating um, something like that so it's dipped in something and with a protective coating in it now I did on this one I did grind it back a bit but I didn't grind it back like all the way that I've done on this edge here. So maybe that um, that coating was also interfering with my welding. So I'm gonna weld another piece onto here, but I'm gonna grind it right back so that the, the, uh, the coating that's on there has no chance to um, get in there and interfere my welding. And we'll see how that comes out. Alrighty, so I got those cleaned up. I'm gonna give them a tack and then I can weld them up. Hopefully it works out better now. I've ground down all that um, that protective coating or whatever the coating is on the on the tube there. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Find it very hard to tack. All right, so I've sharpened my tungsten and let's try that again.
That works better. All right, well there's another lesson learnt. Make sure you always have a sharpened tungsten. Now that that's tacked, let's try and go around with some filler. So not too bad, much better than what I was doing before. Still a couple of little hiccups here and there, but it's definitely looking more, a lot more like a TIG weld. So for this, for these next couple of passes, I adopted this more of a dabbing motion like this with the, uh, with the filler that I've seen all over the, um, on the YouTubes and all that. And if you have a look, See, this one's starting to get better. This is where I actually ran out of filler wire and then just it sort of flattened out. But if you look at this one here, um, I had control over the filler wire and I used that dabbing motion and it actually started to stack and start looking a little bit better. Alrighty, so finished welding that off. Got a little bit better, um, but I did run out of filler wire and I ended up finishing it off just by... Um, just basically using the torch to run around the rest of it and I want to see if I can do that now by putting another piece on here and running around and welding it just with the torch I want to see if I can just stick the two together with just alrighty so that didn't really work out as expected as you can see I've got some holes there and then I don't have some holes and then I do have some holes so what I worked out with trying to do that was is that if you have a gap in between your material you cannot join the two together the only unless you put filler wire in obviously but if you want to weld that just with the torch you really have to have um, zero gap between the two surfaces so when you're melting the uh, the metal the two are melting together instead of having a gap like that and then actually the arc is just blowing the two apart so it just melts it apart um, so yeah that is something that I've learned with that which is awesome so yeah making all these mistakes and learning from them so I thought I would stick those two pieces together that I welded the pipe and that flat plate and try and make some architectural piece of beauty but it didn't really work out that well But anyway, we'll get there, we'll get there. Pretty pussy welds, pretty pussy welds. But, you know what they say, practice makes perfect. But at least I've got uh, this nice statue to uh, remember my first ever time of TIG welding. Like I said before, got the date on there, 9th of the 5th, you. So um, I think I was about three hours in, in the garage mucking around with this, uh, this TIG welding and um, I've already learnt quite a bit to be honest and a lot more than I actually thought. Um, so a couple of things that I want to touch on, 
I know I said earlier on there was a few things, um, but I wanted to say five things that really stood out to me um, in that first sort of three hours of TIG welding, um, things that I picked up. And one is make sure you have a sharp tungsten. Like you, you really need to make sure that it is sharp. And if it catches and makes a little ball at all on the end of it, um, you gotta resharpen it. So this one here, I thought it was a lift TIG, but it's actually scratch start. So you have to scratch it along like you're doing a, um, what's a majigger? Like a, uh, an arc welder, scratch along. And if you don't quite get it right, it can stick and it can ball up. But also when you're welding, and if you accidentally touch the filler, filler rod onto it, um, it will just make a massive ball on the end of it and your welds will go to shit. So you need to make sure that it is really, really sharp um, and stop what you're doing, stop welding if you need to sharpen it. The next one is make sure that torch is like basically vertical straight on top of the weld. You can't have like a massive angle um, like that or like that because um, the, the arc and everything just doesn't work properly. So make sure you gotta have, make sure you have a vertical torch. Um, the third thing, I don't know if I said two before, but the third thing is make sure you have the right tungsten size and filler rod for the, um, for the size of the metal that you are actually working with. The smaller tungsten that I had in there was okay for the um, exhaust pipe. It wasn't too good for the thicker five mil plate that I was welding. Um, and the fourth thing is make sure you clean your parts up. So with acetone and even grinding them up, like that exhaust pipe had that protective coating on it, the al aluminiumized coating or whatever the fuck it is. Um, make sure you grind all that off and uh, start with a clean surface. And the fifth one, but the biggest one, is make sure the fucking gas is turned on. Now because of the type of TIG that it is and the torch that it is, you have to open the valve on the handle to get the gas to flow out. And I don't know how many times that I didn't turn it on and forgot, and then my tungsten burnt down or it made a ball on the end and I had to keep sharpening it. And I, every time I was like, oh, the gas, oh, the gas, every single fucking time. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I kept forgetting the gas. Um, maybe cause I'm just used to like a, an arc welder that you just scratch it and go, you don't need gas. Or even with my MIG welder, you push the button and then the gas comes out. Um, so I never think about, okay, I need to turn the gas on first. So yeah, that is the biggest one I reckon is turning that gas on. Alrighty folks, I'm going to end the video here. Um, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you are a regular uh, watcher and you're usually here for the uh, E46 drift build, um, thanks for coming back and watching this video. If you came here just to watch the uh, video because it was titled Teaching Myself How to TIG Weld, thank you also for stopping by and watching the video. If you're interested in um, following along with my drift car build, I've got about 10 episodes out already, um, and it's basically my BMW E46 drift build and everything that I'm doing to that. So yeah, gonna end the video here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, if you wanna continue watching the videos and stay up to date with everything that's going on, um, please consider subscribing. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, guys. Peace.